Hi, this is Tom Malloy. Okay, here are five lessons I wish I learned before I started making movies. Here we go. Number one, I would focus on genre only, right? There's times, and, and look, at as filmmakers, we all want to make those dramas, the edgy type of dramas that's a special story, and I've done those, and... <laughs> they're not very profitable, right? They're, it's, they're, they're tough if, if you, you, know, you have an audience that's an art house audience to kind of financially be successful with those films unless you have some big cast or something like that. And even then, it's a little bit tougher than the genre film. So if I focus on genre, um, and especially one like an action genre, which I haven't made, like an action genre like that, we talk to buyers all the time and, and buyers seem to want that movie more than anything because it travels internationally. But uh, I've made horror movies, I've made thrillers and things like that, and those always did better in the long run than the, the non-genre films. Another lesson I wish I learned was to brand myself. That's huge, right? If you're gonna make your first film as a horror movie and then after that you wanna make dramas, that's not good, right? And I remember doing that. I've produced 20 films, they've been all over the board, right? And so uh, I would say, I wish I knew before I went in to just go, all right, you're gonna make horror movies, only make horror movies. You're gonna make comedies, only make comedies, right? And if you brand yourself, then people start to kind of put you in that box, but that's a good thing, right? So that then they, they know, oh, I've got a comedy. Oh, let's get this person because the, the, he's a great comedy director. She's a great comedy director. Uh, then they know versus they're just, oh, they just do a ton of movies. They're not going to put you in that box and uh, in their minds where they go, oh, that's the person that's right for my movie. So branding yourself helps so much. Another lesson I wish I learned was attaching sales or distribution early on. Right, if you can get somebody interested in your film early on, one, it shows the market the marketability of your film and the viability of your project, but two, they could help you on cast and they could help you on potential pre-sales and things like that. They could advise you, all right, you put this actor A or B in there and this will truly help us in, in sales. So attaching a, a, a sales and distribution company early is truly just leveraging yourself in giving your film the best opportunity that it can as far as making money goes. All right, this is a great one. Chill out more, chill out. At the end of the day, we're not saving lives here. We're just making films, right? And I remember early on in my producing career, uh, I'd be making a film and something would happen, you know, the sound guy would quit or something like that. And I would like, you know, it almost put me in a hospital of stress and nervousness. And as I got older, you get to the point where you just go, oh, they haven't figured it out, you know, it's like you have to be completely solution-minded all the time. Um, there's an interesting movie, Wag the Dog, where D uh, Dustin Hoffman basically does an impression of Robert Evans, possibly the greatest film producer of all time, Robert Evans, and he basically does this impression of him and everything that happens in Wag the Dog, they're making a movie, and everything that happens, he goes, oh, this is nothing, oh, we had this happen on this other set, and anything that happened, he's like, ah, it's nothing, you know, and it's that chilling out, um, aspect of it is that once you do it, and a lot of that comes from experience, once you do enough films, you start to see the problems that happen again, you go, oh, we'll, we'll find a way, you know, and so chill out and, and be solution oriented. Finally, and this is an interesting one, try not to get too excited when you're on set and then do crazy stuff like meaning, all right? Every time I've done films and, uh, you know, I'm, as I'm getting, doing more and more films and they just, just produced my 20th film, it's like I start to see myself doing this. You get so excited. And that's the best part of making films is that you get so excited thinking you have gold. And every film. And, I, and the last time I worked on, there were some newer producers that hadn't produced a film before. And they were like, oh, this is the great, greatest thing ever. And they, they're willing to do anything. Sell their car, you know. Here, all right, we need some more money. Just put on my credit card. Things like that. Because I think this is going to be the greatest film ever. Now, maybe it is. Okay. But the bottom line is... Uh, there is some kind of amazing energy when you're shooting a film that doesn't always translate when you're editing and you're in post to the film and then you're trying to sell the film, all right? That's a big difference. Michael Caine said it best that when people watch the dailies, they buy the houses and the, the boats and stuff like that. And then when they see the assembly edit, then they start crying and they sell all that stuff. And, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he said that in his great book, Acting in Film. And it's true. There's just so much energy when you're creating something it's it, always going to drop when you see that assembly edit and you go, okay, now we got we to gotta work with this film and kind of piece it together and, and make it better and better. So don't get too excited. Be cautiously optimistic about your successful film.